Hello everybody, welcome to another Saul at the Movies. I just got back from seeing Cars 3 by Pixar in theaters, and here's what I thought about it. So Cars 3 is a continuation of the Cars franchise, which hit a noticeable low with Cars 2 back in 2011, but it tried to reinvigorate things with the sequel, not counting the spin-off Planes series, which... Whatever, who cares? So yeah, this is the third installment in the Cars Direct franchise, and it follows, continues to follow the story of Lightning McQueen, who has been racing for years and he loves doing it, but now it seems like many younger cars are starting to take his place, and he's not as fast as he used to be, so he's not winning races. And so, when a new racer comes into the scene, Jackson Storm, he- Lightning McQueen has to prove that he can be better than Jackson Storm and retain his dignity and the legacy that he left people. I think this story's really good, to be honest. Um, it's, it's a lot like Rocky IV. Uh, it, it's, it, you would think it's a typical, like, sports comeback story, you know, it's like, ooh, old man's not as good as he used to be, but in all honesty, I think the way that they express it, at least for the first half of the movie, is pretty good. I would say it has that sort of Toy Story 3-ish feeling where it's like, you know, the fear of not being needed, and then the fear of not being wanted, you know, like, at some point people aren't gonna need you anymore, but then at a further point they're not even gonna want you anymore, and I think that that's a real legitimate fear that you can have if you've been exposed to the limelight, you know, losing that sort of thing. And Lightning McQueen didn't have his 15 minutes of fame, he was genuinely famous for a long time, and he had a big impact on people's lives, at least in the world, uh, the movie's world, so, so I could see that being a real legitimate fear for a character, and turning that into a story, I think is a good idea overall. It's just, I think that it's better expressed in the first half of the movie as opposed to the second half, but I don't really want to spoil it because I would say, mm, it's worth seeing, but I'll get more into that later, so I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, but let's just say that that particular story point is better expressed in the first half than the second half. So Lightning McQueen is back as the protagonist, thankfully. It's not Mater anymore, it's Lightning McQueen. And I'd have to say that he's the strongest character-wise that he's ever been in this movie. In the first one, you know, he's a cocky asshole who thinks he can do everything right. And in the second one, he's just kind of there. Like, from what I remember, he's just there. Uh, because Mater takes the spotlight. But in this one, they give a real good insight to his fear of losing his fame and his legacy and not being able to do what he wants to do anymore. That's interesting. But he's still just kind of there again. I mean, obviously he's the protagonist, so he's important to the story. But I don't know. It just seems like his character has a hard time expressing that emotion. Maybe it's because they're cars and not people that it's difficult for them to express that fear and that, uh, you know, sadness. The, the fear of not being needed and everything. With the toys in Toy Story, the fear of not being needed or not being wanted, it's better expressed despite them being like plastic toys. With the cars, I don't know, it's difficult for them to show emotion. So I wouldn't say Lightning McQueen is bad in that regard. He's actually the best he's ever been. It's just, I don't think he expresses the emotions needed for this particular story he's going through, the particular conflict very well. So yeah, he's okay, but I wouldn't say he's great. Um, there's, you know, there's there's more characters like Cruz Ramirez is Lightning McQueen's new trainer, and she's alright, again. She's just kind of like a peppy, upbeat woman, nothing particularly special to say about her. Again, because of second half spoilers, I'm not going to elaborate too much, but let's just say that she didn't get on my tits or anything, but she's just kind of there, so whatever, who cares. Um, but the villain in it, Jackson Storm? I don't think I've ever seen a lesser quality Pixar villain before, except maybe in Cars 2, but again, I, I don't remember much about that. But Jackson Storm, he barely is a threat at all. I mean, he's just kind of like, heh, fuck you, Lightning McQueen, and that's it. That's his whole character. He, it's literally just the physical moving embodiment of fuck you, Lightning McQueen. And you think that might be funny. But it's not. I mean, this movie is not funny, but anyway, I'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, Jackson Storm, he has no presence whatsoever. He's just sort of this 
all-encompassing, encroaching threat on Lightning McQueen as opposed to a character or a villain character. So Jackson Storm sucks. I mean, he just seems like an excuse to sell toys. And I know that's basically what Cars is, is an excuse to sell toys. But he, in particular, just seems the most, like, own the Jackson Storm toy because he looks the coolest, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, if, as far as villains go, I, I don't think Pixar has had a weaker villain. Um, I might be wrong on that regard, but... That's just what I think right now. So, in terms of what's good with the movie, the story is definitely the best part. So, eh, well, I mean, I think they did this particular type of better or story better in Toy Story 3. Like I said, with the whole over the hill, not being needed, not being wanted sort of thing. With the toys, it's easier to identify with them. Because most people would identify better with a human-looking toy as opposed to a car. <laughs> but... I still think that the way the story is expressed is very good. Because, yeah, there are certain scenes where when Lightning is alone and he has time to think about what he's gonna do with his life that I think are expressed very well, even though they're cars, you know? I could understand being afraid of that sort of thing and just wanting to keep to just hold on desperately to what you love and having people all around you telling you no, you can't do that anymore. Like having other people choose your destiny I think is actually a really terrifying prospect and it's something everyone's gonna have to go through at one point. So in terms of expression in that regard, I think it's very good. But that's about it. I mean, the story is probably the best out of all of them. In Cars 1, uh, the story's kind of cliched. In Cars 2, it's fucking ridiculous. But in Cars 3, I think it's the strongest aspect. And yeah, certain moments of Lightning McQueen's character, um, I would say, is is not strong, but better than it's ever been. Because he, he's had, like, three movies now to be a better character. So I think they took good advantage of that. Still, though, I have to wonder why you would want to watch this movie. You know, if you really care about Lightning McQueen's story, then okay, watch the movie. But there's nothing about it that really, like, mm, it, like, stands out about it. Like, the whole time I was sitting there watching it, just kind of, like, meh, the whole time. Nothing about it really pissed me off. Nothing about it really wowed me. It wasn't like the Boss ba Baby, where I just sat there the whole time with a big frown on my face or with Captain Underpants, you know? I was like, yeah, this is fun. It's just, it didn't, it, it didn't garner any, like, real output of emotion from me. It just felt like... It exists, and that's basically it. Which I guess I could spin to its credit. It's definitely a movie that exists. Not bad, not good. It just exists, and that's that's fine. You know, it's better than Cars 2. I think that's sort of inanimous, is that it's better than Cars 2. I think Cholera is better than Cars 2, but whatever. So, I, I don't know, it just character-wise, other than Lightning himself, it's weak. Luckily, they know to keep Mater sort of shoved to the side. They know that he's like the minions of the Cars franchise, is that he has to be in it, but luckily they keep him where he should be, just on the sidelines, and Lightning gets the focus, which is good. It's not just an excuse to show off fancy locales or anything. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks super nice. Of course, it's Pixar, of course it's going to look nice. But it has that kind of nice looking charm to it that Cars 1 did. And that's actually one of my favorite parts of Cars 1. I'm someone who will defend Cars 1 as being a mediocre but still enjoyable movie. Like, I can watch it and not be like, Oh god, what did I watch? Ugh, that sort of thing. So, you know, a lot of people talk about Cars as if it's like this, like, champion of mediocrity, mediocrity but eh, I just think it's okay. You know, not nothing great, nothing terrible, but, um, what am I trying to say here? But the best part of Cars was the locales, and yeah, it was mostly like, um, you know, like, Roll Route 9 type thing, but I still think it's really, it was a really pretty, it was a really pretty looking movie back then, and still pretty looking today. Cars 2 looks pretty, but I just feel like the whole movie was an excuse to go to fancy locales like Italy and Japan and all that shit. But with Cars, I just feel like maybe it's a little bit more humble of an experience. Uh, you know, like, they sort of keep it more self-contained. It's more about lightning as opposed to going to fancy locales and showing off spy shit and everything like that. So, as far as movies go, I could say that at least they tried. You know, they got off track for a while, but they tried. It seems like a movie that the creators genuinely wanted to make, which is good, obviously. With Cars 2, I always got the feeling that they just were, like, under duress when they made it. But with this one, I do feel like they did want to make it to a certain regard. Or to a certain extent. So, would I recommend Cars 3? 
I mean, if you've already seen Cars 1 and Cars 2, there's no harm in seeing Cars 3. Like I said, it's the strongest story-wise, so I don't think you'll leave the, the theater or anything going like, Oh god, that was terrible! But there's not really any reason to see it, especially because it doesn't really give any closure onto the story. Now, I figured this, the ending would be going a certain way, and again, I'll be trying really hard to avoid spoilers here. I would have thought the ending of the story was about accepting your age and your limitations and moving on, but still retaining your legacy. And you know, I think that's a much better, like, moralistic standpoint to take. But with this, it just is kind of like, well, fuck age. I think that's kind of the, the moral I took from the movie, it's like, fuck age. Even though age is something that we all have to deal with. You know, I think- I just think Toy Story 3 expressed it a little bit better, like, just moving on with your life, but with Cars 3, the ending is just like, the, let's not move on, let's just keep doing the thing we're doing forever, and it's okay. And I think the big root of the problem is that the story is about aging, but they're cars. They don't look different. Like, Lightning McQueen doesn't look older. You can say he has arthritis and that he needs to take a nap and then he's slow or whatever, but he's still going nearly 200 miles an hour. He still looks exactly the same as he always did. So, and everyone else around him looks exactly the same too. So how is he older? Sure, time has passed and everything, but I just, I don't know, maybe if you're really into cars, you can identify like the, the, car model that he is or something and be like, oh yeah, that's old, but I don't know, me, like, I think the story and the expression of the story would have worked better if there had actually been some signs of age with Lightning McQueen, I, but it's just, it just doesn't work. So, yeah, I think the lack of an actual, like, definable age on Lightning McQueen is what kills it. So, yeah, I would recommend it if you've already seen Cars 1 and, oh, God forbid, Cars 2. If you haven't seen it, I mean, it really throws you in. There's not really anything that, to establish anything. It's- I mean, it's got a lot about Doc Hudson, who you wouldn't know if you hadn't seen the first movie, because they don't- they don't establish how he died or anything. I know the voice actor died, but, uh, um, like, the character of Lightning McQueen, they don't say how he died and who he was, when, you know, it's just kind of like, well, you know Doc Hudson, so let's just move on. So yeah, it's not too good at establishing itself, so I would say if you haven't seen Cars- one and two, watch them first before seeing Cars 3. I think that's a given, but you know, just just because. Um, yeah, not a bad movie, not a good movie, just okay. It's just an okay movie. Much like the first one, it's just okay. And that's all I have to say about that.